Hi, leading ladies of the light. Day 27. I'm getting so much information. I'm finding it very difficult to sleep. Last night, I went to bed early, but I couldn't sleep. Welcome to another viewpoint, another perspective of the temple. I'm coming to you live inside my private Facebook group, The Golden Path Experience, and I'm coming from the kitchenette of the temple. And I thought, wow, as I tuned in here, I have celebrated 40th birthday parties at this kitchenette with our sisters. Hi, Emma, I can't wait for you to come to the Sunshine Coast and see the temple for yourself. I've celebrated birthday parties live at the temple in the evenings. We've had pregnancy news, we've celebrated wins, we've celebrated relationship uh, restorations, we've celebrated so many juicy women's business around this kitchenette. So at the completion of a temple night, I always share herbal teas, a pot of chai and beautiful kind of raw treats and food. And really how that I've, I've always offered food and nibbles and, and treats and delights. And I love when the women connect together and share after a temple night and sitting in sacred circle. I also do it to ground the women because the energies are really quite high and a lot of them have to drive home after the evening. So I also do it as a safety measure as well. Hi, Catherine. Thanks for joining me. <laughs> So today is day 27 of my lives and that comes to a nine and today's day in Australia is the 29th which comes to an 11. So I am actually giving this class and transmission on a 9-11 frequency and if anyone remembers when the Twin Towers fell it was on a 9-11. 9-11 is a very powerful portal. I remember it very well from my lineage through Atlantis. It is a very incredible um, signature through numbers. The 9 refers to completion and people freak out and think oh the death you know the fall the death of the ego so much death it's just a completion. And the nine is held so beautifully by an 11 next to it. And the 11 is not only new beginnings, but it's an amplification of new beginnings. So this is what I'm getting. I give this lesson to you on a 911 that has a very potent signature to it already. Tonight in Australia, it's our 29th of February. It is a leap year. This is a complete glitch in the matrix. This is so powerful. So this is what I advise for tonight. Um, and for those in America, you'll, you'll kind of go this into another 24 hours on your 29th of February. And I spoke about the astral plane last night. So I'm going to bring that teaching here today because I'd love all the leading ladies of the light to do something really quite extraordinary and spectacular in the astral plane on the night of the quantum leap year when there is a glitch in the matrix. Ah, this is my sorcery and magic and I love it so much. <laughs> so the astral plane is an extension of who we are. Most people enter the astral plane in a default setting. What I mean by that is they just play in that field unconsciously and do not realize that they have the power to even craft the reality inside the astral plane. Now, when I say astral plane, that does include your dreamscape at night, but also another dimension, which is known as the fourth dimension, which a lot of people don't understand and don't speak about. We kind of just skip the fourth dimension and say that we're working from the 3D and we're accelerating the growth of humanity into an integration and an understanding of the fifth dimensional frequencies. I'm like, well, that's all well and good, but why do we keep skipping over the fourth dimension? Fourth dimension has something to do with your astral plane. It is not just your astral plane, though. 
but this is the world of your dreams, your dreamscapes. And there's beautiful Indigenous story that was shared with me from the Indigenous of Australia about the role of the dream runner. And they send the dream runner out through their dream time stories. Now, I believe a lot of the power of creating this new golden age in this new earth is held by the storytellers, the songwriters, it's the creatives, it's the ones that weave their magic through song and story to begin to change the fabric of this reality. So the astral plane is your domain. The landscape actually is under your command. It's a world that you can script and create parameters around it in order for things to go quite smoothly and systematically in the astral plane. Now, the first step, if anyone is entering the astral plane with awareness and consciousness is, the first step I would give you is clean up your mess. Clean up the debris that you have unconsciously created in the astral plane. And this is simply by me setting a really strong intention. And I do that in my waking state. So I call that my um, dream state aware though. So I go into a lot of dream states awake and aware. <laughs> So I would clean up, first step, clean up the debris and the energetic litter and, and the, send an intention to really resolve the karmic loops and the broken record scripts that are running through your astral plane. Once I get a sense of energetically, okay, that's done, that's been cleaned up, then I begin to set the parameters. Now I could, if I wanted to develop, um, connecting with souls that have crossed over. I'm not into that. People are very talented at that. It's just not my cup of tea. I'm just simply not interested in connecting with loved ones and those that have crossed over. However, it is an ability that you can create on the astral plane. Um, what else? People are very susceptible to supernatural activities, visitations of our galactic brothers and sisters, um, different races from different planets. I have an interest in that and a lot of women seek me out that have had supernatural experiences, visitations from spirits, ghosts, they've interacted and seen UFOs in their childhood. So that realm is available to me. I certainly, though, for me, I turn the dial down. It's like the volume dial on that. I turn it down and I can still access it. I can turn the volume up or the frequency up if I wish to gather more information in that. And also if I want to send a call out that I'm ready to help those people again, it's like I would make that more available in the astral plane. But really what I, what I kind of want to um, drill home is this relationship with your astral plane. It is an extension of your body. It's an extension of who you are. We've got the physical body. We've got the energetic body, the etheric body. We've got the crystalline body, the rainbow light body. And all of these are contained within the Merkaba, which is that double octahedron of light. That is our chariot of fire. That is how we move around in this reality. The astral plane and your dreamscape is simply an energetic extension of those worlds. So it is under your command. So I simply set the parameters that I'm not that interested in crossing, um, connecting with loved ones that have crossed over, don't have an interest in it, and I just don't engage with the uh, elements that create that story. I also then set the parameters that, yes, you are able to work overnight, Myra, as I sleep, but my work must be conducted in temple form. That is why I now get three, four, 
messages a day from people saying you were in my dreams last night or either you were in my meditation as I sat down and I saw you teaching in the temple. It's because I've set the parameters for that to be so. That feels like good service to me. That feels like putting um, uh, like good parameters around my effective use of time. So I've set my life up now for me to be in service during daylight hours while I am awake and aware consciously. And I've also accelerated my mission by saying, you are Myra, you are able to work in the astral plane as this physical body sleeps, but I've consciously set the parameters. I, it must be in temple form. It must be as a really clear, concise, energetic transmission. I'm not to waste my time in kind of conversation that goes around and around in circles. I'm not interested in going on massive, big journeys in my astral plane. So do you, be, do you see how you're able to actually script what realities you want to create and how you can be, be uh, best put to your use in the astral plane? I use my astral plane purely for service service to humanity and it is very clear i do not wake up with the sensation of like wow i went on this mystical journey and i got this symbol and then i was off there and then the parameters for my dreamscapes are absolutely i must be in service i must either be teaching the truth teaching the students how to connect in with their divinity or i must be a student and I am to receive teaching of the most highest frequency of the most aligned truth. And so that would be my own apprenticeship. And I believe one of the ways you can accelerate your life in this time is to ask for an apprenticeship in the dreamscape because you accelerate and fast track all the lessons you're learning. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Zana. Hi, Bindi. Thanks for tuning in. So you can put yourself to work as a student in the astral plane, set the parameters around for you to consciously remember it in the morning. If you don't consciously remember it in the morning, instruct your body to remember. And then when you're up in waking state, it's like, whoa, I can actually hold a circle today because I feel like I got an instruction. I feel like I got an education last night in the astral plane. Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm making best um, productivity. My efficiency of my life goes through the roof because I've got my dream and astral planes working for me while I sleep. And then I set a really clear parameter that the physical body, the cellular structure, the nervous system, the muscles of this physical body of Myra go into deep, deep rest, that they are nourished, that I receive healing, that I receive alignment, and I'm either as a student receiving instruction or I can have the teacher role in the astral plane. And the evidence will become clear to you. You'll start getting messages from people, family and friends or those in your networks that know you. And they're like, they'll just, they'll be like the strangest thing, strangest thing. I was sitting in my temple last night. I got transported to this planet and there you are, sat with you privately in the temple and you were teaching me all night. I'm like, brilliant. And then it has a triple benefit. The other, the, the expanded results of this is that if that woman were then to truly connect with me in the waking state, in this reality, I have fast tracked her ascension already because she's already received teachings in the dream space when it comes to actually doing a physical work or a discovery call with her or mentoring her. She's ex we're at an accelerated pace already. It's like I'm just working and weaving this magic from every different perspective, every dimension that is under my control, that is under my command. This is embodied magic. This is embodied power. 
This is understanding intelligently the vessel of your body and what it is capable of doing. The songs you write, you script everything. Not because you want to take away the magic and the spontaneity. That There's always enough room for that. There's an, always enough room to add another line into a paragraph. There's always an opportunity to go back and edit and, and reiterate or find a better um, uh, uh, adjective, a descriptive word. You can, we can always go back in and add emotion and emote and add dramatic effect. But I want you to get the bones of this down. What do I stand for? What are my values? And what am I scripting in my life in the waking state and when I sleep? And I pray and I'm like, you put me to good use. I'm here for a short, limited amount of time. Divinity, work through me. Use me as an instrument of peace, of love, of inspiration. And it's at a point when I just surrender now. I'm like, okay, you, you take the reins. I'm just, use this body. I've got so many years left on the planet. You put me to service. You were, I'm keeping my body as healthy and strong as I can, just simply so the information and the light and the teachings and the wisdom can just live through me. And that may touch the hearts of some people. So the productivity does go up when you can understand that the astral and dream space is actually under your management. And this is what I call when you're becoming a CEO over your cellular structure. You own it all. It's just another world you get to script. So do so wisely, do so with awareness, do so consciously. I love you so much. I hope this information lands and inspires you into some magic prayer tonight, into a deep meditation tonight. Enjoy your quantum leap year. You do have a blank page currently in this life and you do have a blank page in the astral plane. So what are you going to script? Make it extraordinary. Make it memorable. Make it compelling. Mm, make it fun. <laughs> Thanks, sisters, for tuning in. I can't wait to see you all tomorrow and share some magic with you again. I love you. And remember, follow your golden path.